The following podcast is by Mr. Jim Taylor, elder law and special needs attorney, helping and protecting those who need long-term care. And welcome everyone to Answers for Elders Radio Network. And we're excited today because a lot of you obviously may be in a situation of looking at a change of how do you uh, transition your loved one from maybe living at home or moving into from senior living into a uh, more of a um, elevated period of care. And there's all kinds of situations that we as families deal with. And so we are here with our wonderful Jim Kaler from the Kaler Law Firm. And Jim, welcome to the show. I'm glad you're here because we don't think about these legal contracts that they throw in front of you. And for those of you that are listening to us on podcast, please join us over on YouTube because we actually have slides for this um, hour with us. And so Jim, I'm so glad you're here. So tell us a little bit about, I know that nursing homes and and nursing facilities things like that they have paperwork that we sign and a lot of times we just sign it we don't even see what we're signing <laughs> right i'm sure that's what it is literally like, you, you mm-hmm. literally sometimes you don't see what you're signing well, it's because, tiny it's, tiny tiny print in the back or they put an ipad in front of you and oh, just say God. sign here and then yep. they go to another screen sign here and they go to another screen sign here and You've signed three or four places, an initial two or three places or whatever, and you have idea, no idea how many other pages you never saw. Yeah. I've had that happen to people. They've, they've signed what turned out to be 30 and 40 and 50 page documents, and all they saw was three signature blocks because it was all on a tablet at the nursing wow. home for assisted living. So, yeah, you've got no clue what's there. Wow. Wow. Well, you know, you think about it because obviously when we enroll, it's like we don't even know what we're enrolling into because it's just and a lot of times it's an urgent thing. It's going into a rehab or going into a a situation where you're kind of, uh, you know, deer in the headlights in many cases. And I remember with my mother, I was in that situation where all of a sudden um, the hospital discharge planner says, uh, tell my mother, we're sending you to be with your daughter. And we're going to send you from my hometown, which was about an hour and a half away down to where I lived. And uh, my mom was mad because she didn't want to be with me. Obviously, she wanted to stay, you know, go home. So there was all this uproar. And obviously, we're in a situation where if you're a power of attorney or if you're not power of attorney, those things happen, too. So I'm sure there's all kinds of issues that happen at that time. Lots of them. And you, you are right. You are under the gun. You uh, you or your loved one need care and need care now. And you're more worried about that. And people just assume, oh, I'm going to sign this and they're going to take care of my mom or my dad and everything will be OK. And frankly, usually it is. We're not talking quality of care here. This is these are contract issues we're talking today. I mean, I, as you know, uh Suzanne and if you've listened to my podcast before listeners um I guess, I guess it's Suzanne podcast when I'm a guest so if you listen to me with Suzanne before you know that I work with nurses to look out after my clients care because I've stopped trusting these places but mm-hmm. today we're not talking about those issues yeah. we are a little tangentially but we're talking about the underlying contracts that they right. will ask you to sign for your loved one or you to sign with your loved one um And the issues and clauses that you will see there, Mm -hmm. if you get a chance to look, that frankly are, uh, let's just put them squirrely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that makes sense. It makes sense in the fact that, you know, they're obviously in to take care of themselves. And I know that I had some gotchas put in front of me when my mom was in a rehab facility. Um, and um, all kinds of things that you don't necessarily totally understand when you're when you're admitting a loved one. So yeah. this is really good information. Oh, thanks. Uh, for those of you who've tuned in before and when uh, when I've used slides, again, I'm using something I prepared for the National Business Institute. It's a Wisconsin-based national provider of continuing legal education and continuing education for accountants. They may do some others as well, but I know they do those too. 
and I speak for them frequently. So I have lots of slide programs that that I've prepared for them. So I just rather than writing something new, I use them here. So this is another of my NBIs. And as you can see from this title page, this is about reading nursing home admission agreements and spotting red flags. Now, the same concepts here can apply to uh, assisted living agreements or memory care, okay? Uh, but this is the title that, that MBI chose and I just took it in and ran with it and gave their program. And this was a national program, okay? So, and remember, I am Ohio-based, so some of what I may be saying is true under Ohio law, right. and your law may be better or worse for the consumer um, in your state, but some of this is also national, because nursing homes and assisted livings that accept Medicare and Medicaid are regulated by the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, Yeah, and they have certain rules there for nursing home and assisted living agreements under the CMS. I don't know why it's CMS and not two M's for Medicare and Medicaid, but it's still CMS uh, rules. The at, at the national level, the nursing home and assisted living uh, programs under the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services have their rules posted in chapter 42 of the Code of Federal Regulations at, starting at section 483.10. Uh, the ones that are there are the resident rights mm -hmm. under uh, nursing home and assisted living rules. Okay, this isn't everything we're talking about here. There is more here, and you can, please, I urge you to go look at that. Uh, but we, some of what I'll be saying does come from the resident rights. Some comes from specific clauses about nursing home and assisted living residency agreements or admission agreements or whatever each place calls it. But mm -hmm. there are additional notes under these resident rights, <clears throat> and maybe that's something you and I should discuss in some future episodes. Absolutely. So, so um, in nursing home, and I'm just going to call them admission agreements for the rest of this, at least my slides do, but in, in your neck of the woods or your particular uh, loved ones, nursing home or assisted living, they may call it a rental agreement. They may call it an admission agreement. They may call it a residency agreement. They may call it just about anything else. Okay. But this is the contract about your loved one staying there, or maybe it's about you staying there. Okay. Uh, under whatever name they use. So the assisted living contract specifically must include services that meet the client's needs, okay? Now, this may be a state law thing, not a federal law thing, but even if you, because so, we have this in Ohio, uh, your state may have it, your state may not have it, but it is a practical concern. So make sure that you have an idea of what your loved one needs and mm -hmm. the contract addresses that. Now, if you need to get a handle on what your loved one needs, you may want to get a care expert involved, an aging life care expert is what they call themselves. And you can find someone at aginglifecare.org and there's a button for find an aging life care expert. So if you aren't, if you don't have the discharge uh, notes from your loved one staying in the hospital and, and see what the needs mm -hmm. are, and you don't have another assessment of what your loved one's needs are, or even if you don't understand it, you want to get something written in English, please look up an aging life care expert at aginglifecare.org and click the button and find someone in your area. Zip codes seem to work best in that search tool. Okay. Sure. Now in my world, I've got the three nurses who work for me, Rebecca, Roberta, and Margie, and they take care of filling this gap in for my clients uh, with their expertise and experience. But not everyone in the world has Rebecca, Roberta, and Margie, and they only travel a certain distance. I'm not sending them out to sure. Seattle for you. <laughs> um, no. And then your state law may also then flip into the nursing home side. Remember, sure. what I just said was has to include services that meet the client's needs. Nursing homes, again, Ohio issue and maybe copied in other states, maybe not. Mm -hmm. The nursing home must disclose if it has limitations on its services. Okay. Nursing homes tend to be more similar one nursing home to another and all nursing homes grouped together than assisted livings tend to be all alike. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nursing homes, forget quality of care for a second, but just on services they offer. Nursing homes tend to be more fungible than our assisted livings. So that's why this different approach, at least in my state, on 
how the services are described that are available to any resident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Assisted living, because they are very different from one assisted living to the other, have to say what they, they do. And nursing homes, they just assume they do the same as every other nursing home. And if there's limitation, they got to say so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a good thing. And the fact that we remember that all, you know, all nursing homes, skilled nursing facilities is what we call them today, are not a, not the same. Right? I mean, they have a lot of times a national footprint, yes. But yes. again, um, you're there for different reasons. In many cases, you're there for a short stay on a rehab situation, mm -hmm. or if you're there for a longer term, you may be, be under, you know, a, a real tied degree of 24 hour care. So coming exactly. back, um, Jim and I are going to talk in our next segment a little bit about what, Jim? Uh, I don't even know what my next slide is. It is, we're going to talk about admission agreements and uh, whether you they can force you to give up your right to seek Medicaid coverage. Perfect. And Jim and I will be right back right after this. State of Ohio residents, you have a friend to help you navigate long-term care while protecting your assets. You can reach Jim at www.protectingseniors.com or just email him at jkoewler-afe, that's jkoewler-afe at protectingseniors.com. 